Ladies and gents, TFI is back with another CAD tip. Old school, y'all. That's right. Boom. We're going old school. This is really old school. This is nothing new. It's been in the product for ages. Any Anybody that's been using Inventor for a while will know all about this. This is for the newbies that'll be like, I would have never figured that out for myself. So it's all about property expressions, I property expressions, how to do a bit, of, a little bit of introduction to automation, if you like, in, a, in the very loose sense of the word. So we're going to start with an IPT. New IPT, and we're gonna we're gonna do a bit of role playing here, mate. We're gonna do a bit of role playing. Let's pretend to do some work. Which I'm good at that. <laughs> That's how to do 3D sketch on the XY plane. And we're gonna model up something like a plate. Call it a box, mate, if you want. I don't care. <laughs> it's either or, a plate or a box. So two point rectangle. And we're gonna do some best practice here. We're gonna snap to the center point, and we're gonna pull out, and we're gonna do a 100 by 100 mil plate. So normally, what you would do is you type in 100, tab 100. But we're going to be borders here. We're going to do this properly. We're going to name our parameters. And the reason for that will become apparent in just a short second. So we're going to do length. You type in length. And what that does is names this parameter, it names this dimension to something recognizable. Equals, no spaces, and then type in 100. And you can type it. If you don't type in the units like IN or millimeters, it uses whatever the default units are for your template, which in my case is millimeters, but just as a force of habit, I just do it anyway. I always type in millimeters. Don't know why. It serves no purpose at all, but I do it anyway. Tab, and then width equals, then we'll keep this at 100 as well. So width equals 100 mil, and then press tab. That locks the dimensions into place. Verify that it looks good. Press return, and there you go. There's 100 by 100. So you might be thinking to yourself, oh, it's tiny, man. You sort of squint and look at the screen. They're small. Or you can increase the annotation by going to options, your application options, the general tab. And then you can bump the annotation scale up here to something like 1.5. Uh, and you can see it's magnified the, the text on screen. Put it up to two if you want to. It makes it a little bit bigger. Whatever you're comfortable with. But there you go, 100 by 100. Ah, but Neil, but Neil, it, I don't know which one's which, right? Well, if, you, if you're not sure, you can go right-click, and then you can go to uh, Dimension Display, and then show me the name of the parameters, length and width. If we didn't name them, that would be D0, and that would be D1. Or if you're well into a model, it could be D166, D167. So the fact that we've named them makes it a little bit easier on the eye and a bit easier to manage later on. You can also have Expression, and it'll say, ah, oh, width equals 100 mils. So you've got the name and the actual expression of the parameter as well so we'll drop that back to just value and then finish sketch and then when you go to the parameters button here this little fx button here the parameters is it's also on manage parameters it's a big one-stop shop list of all the dimensions or parameters that are in your model and if you don't name them you'll just see d0 d1 d2 d3 all the way up to d100 200 300 whatever how many, however many you've got so it makes it easier just to collectively in one place manage all the parameters in your model so there's length and width. Read. Then we're going to extrude. We're going to do a bit of L extrudo. So uh, not, not a sketch, Neil. No, extrusion. And then we're going to select. Uh, well, so there's only one profile. So it automatically selects it. And then we're going to put a thickness of 20 mil in. But because we're doing this best practice, we're going to put thickness in because we're, we're clever. We're clever. We don't type in thickness. Us, no. We type in THK equals 20 mil. Just for the shizzes and gigs. And then click OK. And there's your thickness in. Go back to the parameters. You've now got length, width, and THK, which is 20 mil. And what's this? What is this random D3 it's put in here? What is this parameter? I didn't ask for that to be there. What is this sorcery? Right, that's a compulsory parameter that you get alongside every single extrusion that you do. And it's basically the taper, which is in the more tab. And uh, that's it there. So you can type in and say 10 degrees taper. Boom, there's a 10 degrees taper. Go to the parameters. That D3 is now 10 degrees. That's all it is. Uh, you can rename it if you want to, like taper 1, taper 2, taper 3, but it's become unmanageable. So I wouldn't bother. Just leave it as D3 and D, whatever the next one is. Okie dokie. So we've now got length, width, and thickness. So we're going to do a drawn IDW because I'm old school. Don't do DWGs. I'm too hip retro and uh, not millennial enough to do a DWG. And we're going to do a base view of the plate. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Yes, I need to save the document. Thank you for binging that loud. That's exactly what I needed. I needed a visual and an audio prompt to tell me to save it. And uh, there we go. Look at that drawn. Who couldn't make that? If your shop floor can't make that, then uh, they're, they're not worth their salt. TFI, drafting school. You're welcome. Right, so there's we're drawn. And we're going to do a parts list. So if you, I mean, I know you wouldn't normally do a parts list of a single part, but you can just detail some 
properties of this part if you want to via a parts list. Parts list is obviously mainly for assemblies. So we're going to do it of that uh, of, the, of that part. Okay, drop it down here, snap it to the bottom right, and then you've got item one, quantity one, part number is plate. I haven't put a part number in, so it's just saying plate. But the description is blank. Oh, why is the description blank? Because, mate, we haven't typed it in yet. Oh, I see. So we're going to go back to the IPT. Right click on the browser node for the IPT. There's multiple ways of getting to the eye properties. You can go down here as well. Right click there. Oops, that's off screen. That's not really all useful. But there's an eye property menu just off the bottom there. Given that you can't see it, we'll go the proper way. Eye properties. Project. Read. Description. So the description is that, I mean, it, there's no right or wrong as to what the description is. It's a description of what the thing is that you're modeling. So we can say it's going to be 100 mil X, or, you know, by 100 mil by 20 mil plate and then you click OK, go back to your drone, and there's your description appearing in the parts list uh, in a very, very messy looking way. Uh, that's really not helpful. There we go. And we'll uh, maximize that column a little bit better. There you go. And see that my drone skills are just unparalleled. They're just unrivaled. Uh, 100 mil by 100 mil by 20 mil plate. Right, so what's the problem? What What, what is the problem? That looks great. Well, it's, it means a first world problem, by all means. But if you do go back to this plate at any point in the future and you decide to change the, the, the width, so the width is now 150 mil, uh, that's fine. It updates It updates the 3D model. You go back to drawing, the, the drawing updates, and any dimensions on here will also update. But your description still says 100 by 100 by 200 by 200. Oh, yeah, I've, I've put a time. Good. Do you know what? I've unintentionally just made an absolutely amazing point. I've just done a typo on the thickness and didn't even realise it. So there, that that's that is bang on the reason why I'm doing this video. Typos, this this tip and or trick is going to eliminate any typos. Right, I'm just waffling on now. So yeah, um, changing the actual parameters of the model, changing the size of the model isn't going to update the description. Oh, but why not, Neil? Because the description's just free text. Oh, I see. There's got to be something wrong with you when you're having conversations with yourself. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's the description. It's just free text. There's nothing to update. So what you've got to do here, delete out the description, and then we're going to we're going to create what's called an expression. So we're going to link some properties into here, and you can do it in in most of these uh, i property fields here. But you type in equals open chevrons and then type in the parameters that you want to put into the description and because we've named them it makes things a lot easier if we didn't name them we'd have to type in d0 and we'd have to know that d0 is the length but because we named it we can just type in length so equals length space by equal uh, open chevrons width close chevrons and then thickness thk and then we can put in plate at the end and then okay and then if you go back to uh, plate what you'll find is that it goes uh -uh. <laughs> x by x by plate what the hell right i've intentionally left out a step that's just so you don't forget to do this because it is quite important you've got to go to fx and then you've got to kindly request inventor exports the parameters <laughs> do you awfully mind if you just uh, export these so i can use them uh, somewhere else in inventor oh, okay then and then you click done. So you've got to tick that box. Once you tick it, it's done. It's done indefinitely for those parameters. Click done. And then when you go back to plate, you'll see you've got now 100 by 150 by 20. So those parameters have been recognized. Go to the eye properties and you'll see that they now appear uh, as they should do in the expression length, width and thickness. Click that little FX button there. 100 by 150 by 20. Oh, but Neil! Oh, but Neil! It's got trailing zeros on the end of it to three decimal places. That looks ugly. How do I get rid of that? I can't delete them. I can't delete them because it's a linked parameter. Right. So to fix that, what you've got to do, go back to parameters, and then you go to the uh, nominal value for each of these parameters. Right-click on there and go to custom property format. And uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can you can drop the precision down. If they're round numbers, you can drop the precision down to one decimal place or no decimal places. Or if you want to leave it as three decimal places, the default precision, you can just ask it to get rid of trailing zeros. And then again, you can, it's this optional. It depends on how many parameters you've got in here. But if you want to apply that, remove trailing zeros to all comparable parameters that are available in the model, tick that there, click OK. It does. You can't see that it's done it here. But when you click done and go to the drawing, boom, there you go. Trailing zeros are gone. And that's it. That's pretty much it. That's how you do it. So now that we go back to our drone, uh, to our model, and change this value to say, let's change the length to 120. And let's change the extrusion thickness to 30. That should now immediately update the drone. 120 by 150 by 30. So those parameters, whatever you set them to, they're now going to always be in the description, which is always going to be on your drone. There you go. Old school tip and trick.
it's uh, it's been around. It's, it's it's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's been around for a while, but it is a, it's a classic. It's a classic tip, which uh, any newbie should know about because it it can save you a lot of time. And this is just an introduction to it. You can create more complex expressions. You can even move that kind of expression mentality across into I logic and do more more complicated things with it. So it is just an introduction, a very basic example of what you can do. So uh, that's pretty much it, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.